Hey guys, I uh, got my uh, Grace FM shirt on, uh, 897 Grace FM, uh, Worship in the Word. Uh, just download it from your app store. It's uh, Grace FM Colorado. Uh, really good uh, preaching and teaching on there. Um, so uh, I highly recommend it. Um, anyway, uh, today uh, we're looking at wisdom and, and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. And we're going to look at the passage of... Matthew uh, chapter 2, verse 1 through 12, and it reads, uh, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, Where is the Messiah? Where was the Messiah to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. When Herod called the Magi, um, then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child was with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So just a little background, uh, the magi, magi or wise men uh, were from Persia, pro probably astronomers. Um, but uh, why were Persians looking for a Jewish king? Um, the Bible doesn't tell us, um, but we know that God loves everyone, uh, Jew and Gentile, uh, Gentile being non-Jew, um, and he's reaching out to everyone. And, and I really love... I really love that God's reaching out to people um, throughout the world in ways we don't know about, in ways we have no idea about. Um, it's just really cool to see God's sovereignty and working through all kinds of different ways to reach people. Um, so, but to summarize the story, you know, the Magi want to find the King of the Jews. So they show up the palace of the King of the Jews. But uh, that's Herod's house. And so the wise men say, where's the one who has been born, the king of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. Um, and then Herod and all of Jerusalem is greatly distressed by this. Um, and we see in the text, it says, when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all of Jerusalem w with him. So... Um, disturbed by this message of the Messiah is is here um, and so so Herod asked the Jewish Jewish chief priests and teachers of the law where the Messiah was to be born um, in the text we see it says when he had called together all the people people's chief priests and teachers of the law he asked them where was the Messiah to be born and it goes on to say, the chief priests and teachers of the law knew the pro prophecy. Um, well, so they knew the prophecy of Micah, um, chapter 5, verses 2 and 4, where it says, But you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And that's from um, Micah uh, chapter 5, verses 2 and 4. 
which was written uh, 400 years before Jesus' birth. So it's a pretty uh, cool prophecy uh, that we have from the Old Testament of the Messiah, which is Jesus. So um, Herod said, said he wanted to worship Jesus, but he really wanted to remove any threat to his rule because he was the king of the Jews. And we see later in the chapter um, when he orders the death of, of all the baby boys in Bethlehem, two years old and under, that, you know, how uh, power hungry he was and afraid of, of losing his, um, his rule. And we see, uh, as the story goes on, the wise men were guided by the star to Jesus, and then they give uh, their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But uh, what's the deal with the gold, frankincense, and myrrh? Um, well, the... Uh, Gold is a gift for a king, and Jesus is king of the Jews. But uh, not only king of the Jews, but as God incarnate and God as, as flesh, in the flesh, he's a ruler over the universe and everything in the universe. So gold is definitely an appropriate gift for Jesus um, as king. Um, uh, then we also see frankincense. So, you know, um, frankincense uh, is used by priests in their duties um, as priests. And we see that in Exodus chapter 30, verse 34. Um, a priest's role was to be uh, a mediator between God and man and to make sacrifices on behalf of the people um, uh, to God. So, but Jesus is the uh, the great and final high priest um, who is the perfect mediator between God and man because he's both uh, fully God and fully man. And we see that in uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and chapter 5. I, I encourage you to read that on your own. Um, but not only... <clears throat> Not only that, we're going to go into the uh, the myrrh, um, and so you know myrrh. Uh, its main use was um, preparing a dead body. So, like if you were having a a baby shower, and then somebody comes to the baby shower and here's some uh, embalming fluid, and you're like. Oh, great. Em embalming fluid. Wonderful. J I thank you so much. Uh, uh, get out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think you'd be within your rights to kick them out. Um, but, um, you know, the, the, the wise men recognized that he was the suffering servant. He was God that was come to die. Um, that was that he's not only the high priest that the frankincense points to, but also the sacrifice, also the spotless lamb that they that the high priest would sacrifice on behalf of the people. So um, not only high priest, but also the sacrifice. He's out. He's God incarnate come to die on behalf of us. And the uh, myrrh um, reflects that. He would be dying um, on behalf of us, and we know that they recognized that he was God because they came and they worshipped him. Um, we read that in verse eleven. So, um, you know, these these wise men were probably familiar with the Old Testament prophecies, like um, Isaiah fifty three verse five. It's Isaiah fifty three verse five, which says, "He was pierced for our transgressions." He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. You know, by Jesus' wounds we we are healed. Um, we are restored. Um, by the punishment brought us peace. Um, the punishment that Jesus endured on behalf of us brings us peace with God. Brings us reconciliation with God. Um, and he was crushed for our iniquities. He's crushed for our sins, pierced for our transgressions, pierced for our wrongs. So um, we see that Jesus is the fulfillment of the um, 
Messiah that was promised throughout the Old Testament. And this was written 700 years before Jesus' birth. Uh, a really awesome prophecy. Um, there's many, many others uh, that we see in the Old Testament of the coming Messiah. Um, so um, we see um, the chief priests and teachers of the law. Um, it's one thing to know, to have the knowledge about the Messiah. You know, they knew a about Micah uh, chapter 5. Uh, they knew about where the Messiah was to be born. but And they were only seven miles away from Bethlehem being in Jerusalem. So they weren't far, but they didn't take the time to check it out. They were unwilling to try to know the Messiah in a tangible way. They were, they were just unwilling to try to know him. And they're just, you know, apathetic and, and want to keep the status quo and keep things the way they are. So, um, you know, that's the, they were just had this apathetic mindset towards him. But on the uh, contrasting that the wise men, they had traveled from Persia to find the king of the Jews because he's greater than any other king that ever has lived or ever will live. And then they worshipped him uh, in verse 11, knowing that he's king, priest, and God who came to die for us, to give us life now and forever. Um, he's king, priest, and God who came to die for us. Um, and, uh, you know, but we're, as we're talking about these these wise men, and um, it, how, do you, how do you become wise? What is, how do you obtain wisdom? Um, well, uh, Proverbs 9, 10, uh, says fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now it's not like fear, like, you know, I've got to be afraid if I walk into church because God might strike me down with lightning. So I gotta be like, you know, bobbing and weaving and checking, looking up a lot and making sure I mean, I'm not going to get struck down or something. I, you know, uh, he's. Uh, fear of the Lord is is talking about like having a reverence, like recognizing that He's our Creator. He He created us. He created this world. He has authority over this world. Um, so once we recognize who God is and our place in the universe, then that's the beginning of wisdom. That's where wisdom starts. Um, and uh, you know, Jesus talked about fear um, when He said. Uh, it's in Luke uh, chapter 12, verses 4 through 5. Um, and it says, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after your body has been killed has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. So, you know, we don't have to really fear, you know, man men and women uh, who can kill the body and that's the worst that they can do to you. But instead, you know, have fear for the one who can cast you into hell. You know, that's what Jesus says. Fear him. You know, fearing the Lord is, is recognizing his, that power and authority over you. Although he's giving us, you know, autonomy in this life to follow and love him or not to, um, our eternal, our eternal destiny is determined by whether or not we want to be with him, whether we want to accept Jesus' payment for our sins on the cross. And if we don't accept his payment for our sins, then we must pay for our sins. We have to, we must pay for the wrong we've done. And we have to be separated from God, which is hell separated from all the goodness of this world that we see currently. We have to be separated from all of God's goodness. But, you know, Jesus also said in, in Revelations uh, chapter 3, verse 20, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. You know, uh, Jesus is he's standing at the door and he's knocking, you know, and he's not 
breaking down the door, kicking it in, you know, uh, hey, let me in, you know, or forcing his way. He's not forcing his self on you. He's not forcing you to, um, to worship him, to follow him, but he's, um, he's there and he's standing at the door knocking and you need to open the door and receive him and be with him. Um, and, and why not? Because he's, he's a loving God. He's a God that would bend over backwards and move heaven and earth and come as a little baby and go through this life that's hard and be spit upon and beat up and mocked and go through it all just to show his love to to me and to you so to me it's a no-brainer why not follow him why not why not um give your life to a to a guy that loves you like that so he's constantly reaching out to you and he just like he was reaching out to the wise men through the star and drawing him, them to himself um, and he's constantly reaching out to you in many ways he's reaching out to you through the Bible he's reaching out to you through you know messages you may hear like this one you know he's constantly reaching out to you um, but we don't want to just have knowledge about Jesus like the chief priests and the teachers of the law but we want to take that knowledge and apply that and actually seek him out and actually find him because he's right there. He's looking for you. He's standing at the door and knocking. So, and so that we can be known and know Jesus and have that relationship. You know, an awesome, uh, an awesome verse is uh, Romans 10, nine. It says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Lord being king, you know, will you let him be the king of your life? Will you let him be in charge of you? Because like we talked about, he, he loves you so much and he has your best in mind. Now it's not easy. doesn't mean it's an easy path, but it's the best path. So will you let him be your king? Will you follow him? Will you submit to him? Because he's a loving and kind Lord and a loving and kind master and a loving and kind God. Um, so, and then it goes on and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You know, that God raised Jesus from the dead and that just like Jesus was raised from the dead, that we will be raised we too will have new bodies in heaven. Just like Jesus had new bodies, we will have new bodies. So the resurrection. And so believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So will you do that? Will you let him be king? And will you follow him and believe that God raised him from the dead? It says you will be saved. You know, it just says so simply that you will be saved. So um, I just pray that you will do that today if you haven't and um so you know we see these in this passage we see these three ways of reacting to jesus we see the uh the chief priests and the teachers of the law and they how they were apathetic and they didn't take the time to go to bethlehem to see the messiah um and then we see you know herod who was militantly against Jesus and wanted to do anything he could to stop him and um, you know and then we see uh, the wise men who were pursuing um, the Messiah and willing to travel from Persia to find the Messiah so I, my question is which which one which one are you you know uh, are you kind of apathetic towards Jesus and eh, yeah or are you you know like like Herod you know None of us are going to identify with the, you know, killing of the baby boys. But, but I think there's all of us have a little bit of Herod in us that we want to have be on our throne. We don't want to submit to God. We want to be in charge of ourselves. We want to, we don't want to relinquish our, our throne, our crown. And, um, so I think there's an aspect of that for all of us. Um, but we all really need to be like the wise men when we're pursuing 
Jesus, where we're drawing close to Jesus, where we're coming to Jesus and growing in that relationship, that we're willing to um, make make that effort to know him and to be in relationship with him. Um, and, uh, and, and fall down and worship him as God, as worship him as king and priest, final high priest, and the, sa the God who came to die for us. Um, so I, I just, uh, I just pray that everyone that hears this sermon will, will follow Jesus and that will, uh, Declare with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God raised them from the dead and be saved. Um, thank you.